Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to discuss about water regulation by antidiuretic hormone, which is also called vasopressin. Let's see where the ADH comes from. Here, this is hypothalamus, and just beneath the hypothalamus, there is pituitary gland. There are lots of nucleus present in the hypothalamus. One of such important nucleus is supraoptic nucleus. This nucleus synthesizes ADH which comes down to the pituitary gland. Here I would like to mention an important concept that ADH synthesizes in hypothalamus and secrete from the posterior pituitary. So posterior pituitary doesn't produce ADH. It is just like a storehouse from where ADH secretes into the general circulation. Now ADH is antidiuretic hormone which means it doesn't allow diuresis or water loss. So it is water conserving hormone. Now what circumstances you need to conserve water? Well when your blood or extracellular water is hyperosmolar. Suppose you are walking alone in a desert without drinking water and food. So you are continuously losing water through sweating, perspiration and urination which will eventually make your blood and extracellular fluid hyperosmolar. So in this situation, your blood need to conserve water. Here, ADH comes into action. It helps the body to reabsorb water from the kidney. As we know, normal osmolarity of the blood is 290 to 300 milliosmol per liter. So if your body is deprived of water and blood osmolarity goes up, more and more ADH will secrete to keep the osmolarity around the normal value. Let's see how this whole system works. You must be knowing about osmoreceptors. Here this is hypothalamus and this is third ventricle. Anterolateral area of third ventricle having some osmoreceptors which can sense osmolarity of the blood. Two such specialized structures are subfornical organ and Organum vasculosum. This part of central nervous system doesn't have an intact blood brain barrier. So, blood or blood products can easily come in contact with the specialized structures so that they can sense the osmolarity of the blood and give signal to the hypothalamus for ADH secretion. Now, let's see how ADH works. Here, I would like to give you another important information. As you know, the other name of ADH is vasopressin because it can cause vasoconstriction. But to produce antidiuresis, small amount of ADH is enough. Whether for vasoconstriction, uh, it needs more amount of or larger amount of ADH. So in low concentration, it acts as an antidiuretic hormone and in high concentration, it acts as a vasoconstrictor. By the time a luminal fluid reaches to the distal part of the nephron, precisely late part of distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct area, it is highly diluted. The osmolarity around uh, 50 to 100 milliosmol per liter. Now, this is important to know that the water permeability of the last part of the nephron is ADH dependent. If ADH is not there, it will remain water impermeable. It means no water can resolve back to the general circulation, so it will pass out as urine. Now let's see how ADH alter the cellular environment. Cells of this part of nephron have receptor for ADH. They are serpentine receptor or seven pass receptor. ADH binds with this serpentine receptor which stimulate intercellular G protein and intercellular G protein stimulates adenyl cyclase which convert ATP into cyclic AMP. When intracellular cyclic AMP goes up, it will phosphorylate protein kinase A. All these steps are nothing but to activate this enzyme. Now you can see there are some intracellular vesicles. Those vesicles are having some special protein channels which look like pores and water can pass through it. That's why those protein channels are called aquaporins. Now, protein kinase A phosphorylates those proteins and they get fused with the luminal membrane of the nephron. Another important concept. Here you can see 
the collecting duct lumen so this side of the cell is luminal side and opposite side is basolateral side actually there are different types of aquaporin channels channels which are present on the basolateral side and luminal side are different only luminal side aquaporin channels are regulated by adh so in the presence of adh aquaporin channels are planted on the luminal side of the nephron so adh makes this portion water permeable now listen carefully the interstitial fluid here is hyperosmolar but the luminal fluid is hypoosmolar so the direction of the water will be from here to here which means water resorbed back to the interstitial fluid from luminal fluid in the presence of adh so if adh is present distal part of the nephron will be water permeable and you will pass concentrated urine but if adh is not there extra water will come out of your body as diluted urine that's all guys if you have enjoyed this video please like comment and share and don't forget to subscribe thank you